happy 4th of July. I hope you're doing great. Um, I know a lot of you guys are getting ready to have your your barbecues and your family and friends and the fireworks and everything. And that's great. I hope that you have a wonderful day. In light of uh, the 4th of July, though, and the day that we're living in, we have a lot of complications today and a lot of concerns. I want us to think back to the Revolutionary War in 1776 and the Declaration of Independence and the 56 guys that signed that and realize that they were fighting for freedom. And yet, as they signed that Declaration of Independence, they were losing every battle. And, but they, they stood on something they believed in, and they wanted that freedom, and they were willing to cost it their life. Um, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, Paul's in prison. He's standing up for what he believes in. He wants to go to Rome. He wants to talk to Caesar, and he's willing to die for what he believes in. And there's a church that wanted to come alongside and help Paul, but they're having some struggles. In verse 10 of Philippians 4, Paul writes this to him. He said, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. King James says you lacked opportunity, which means simply this. You were in an unfavorable, unfruitful season. And yet in an unfavorable season, the church of Philippi were able to help Paul. Why? Because they revived their concern for Paul. In other words, they pur purpose purposely directed their attention on what they believed God wanted them to do, and they became fruitful. They got rid of the distractions, all the controversies, all the stuff that people were saying about them, and they focused in on one thing, and they became fruitful in an unfruitful season. You know, I think about the whole issue with the fig tree when Jesus is about ready to go to the cross and he curses this fig tree and he curses it because it was not bearing fruit. And yet, you know, they, they notice that it's not in season. It's not supposed to bear fruit. And yet Jesus cursed it because even out of season, because the son of man is here, you need to be bearing fruit. And that's why I love Nathaniel Green so much. That's what I love about the Church of Philippi, and that's the testing I believe we're seeing today, that God is seeing who's being fruitful in an unfruitful season, who is reviving their concern for the things of God, and who's willing to bow down and allow the God of this age to control them. So I want to talk to you for just a moment about Nathaniel Green. I just love this guy. I love the, this, the whole story of Nathaniel Green. And he was a major general and George Washington loved him. He was a very clean guy in the army, which George Washington saw none of. He was a very orderly guy and he understood how to fight. And yet Nathaniel Green came out of a family of Quakers that were said, well, he was told you can't fight. But Nathaniel Green realized that if I continue doing the things that I'm doing, I'm going to lose not only my right to live, but I'm not going to be able to worship like I want as well. And, and our family, the Quakers, are not going to be able to, you know, worship like they want to. And so he took up arms and became a commander. Eventually, he went down and fought against Cornwallis in uh, South Carolina and defeated Cornwallis. And I always thought it was funny because Cornwallis had a meeting with him and he said, listen, you're not fighting fairly. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're not fighting. You're, you're out in the woods and you're, you know, you know, you're shooting at us as we're marching down the road and you're not standing toe to toe with us. And Nathaniel Green said, well, if we did that, we would all be massacred. You'd kill us. And they said, well, this is the way we fight. And Nathaniel Green said, no, you're in America now. You find us the way we are. You're on our territory. We own this territory and we stake our claim here. You fight our way. We're not fighting your way. And I just love Nathaniel Green. And I think that for, for the most part, the church, we need to start acting like God would have us to act. We're on God's land. We're on God's time. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be doing things God's way. And yet, so many of the church are just willing to succumb 
to the God of this age and the world and to do things the way they tell us we're supposed to do them. How's it working for you? I think God's testing us again on just on this July 4th, 2023. I want you to hear this message. We need to be bearing fruit in an unfavorable season and we can do it because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. May God bless you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.